Hello, welcome to my tech fan. My name is Igor and in this video I want to find out effect of the flow rate to the strength of the printed object. The idea came from a review of this digital microscope and I was analyzing some broken test specimen and I noticed so big gaps between the layers. I mean that's normal thing but I was thinking if I can push a little bit more material to reduce those gaps how stronger will be this object. Don't mix this with the line width. With uh, these settings, uh, the slicer will try to adjust the distance between lines. But uh, with, the, with the changing of the flow rate, uh, we are just pushing a little bit more or less material, but the distance between lines will be equal. And this is what I need in this experiment. In Prusa slicer, you can find this in uh, filaments and extrusion multiplier. By default it is 1, it is 100%, and uh, for example if I want uh, 120% I can set to 1.2 or 0.8 to I don't know, 80% for example. In Cura it is visible only in advanced mode or just uh, type flow in the search and it will be under the materials tab. And uh, here the value is in percentage so uh, we can change this to get uh, more or less uh, flow rate. In this experiment I will have uh, three types of the test specimens. Uh, the default one will be printed with regular 100% flow rate and then uh, I will do one which will be the 120% and also a group of uh, test objects which are printed on 80% uh, flow rate. Let's take a closer look of these test specimens. I will have three different test specimens. Uh, these are for layer adhesion printed in vertical position. These are printed in horizontal position to check the tensile strength. And these are printed also in horizontal position, but it is combination of the tensile and the bending test. These are hooks from the Stefan only scaled down to 75%. And they look uh, good. So they are printed in 100% uh, flow rate. Uh, the side walls are perfect, and also the top layer. Uh, the bottom layer is not so nice because I use the smooth sheet here, uh, but uh, it's quite acceptable. The next group is printed in 80% uh, uh, flow rate. With printing I didn't have any problems. I noticed that the first layer is, is quite uh, ugly because it's weak. And uh, maybe I hope it will be visible in this camera. So I can see quite big gaps. So this is 80% flow rate. That's quite a low value, but I was curious uh, about it. And uh, interesting, the si uh, side walls are quite nice. Uh, top layer, well, almost acceptable, only the bottom layer is quite weak. And I can see here one line which uh, didn't stick to the side. Uh, this means probably with uh, higher flow rate uh, we can raise even that overhang. So here the maximum overhang angle is uh, lower with the uh, 80% flow rate. And then these test specimens are printed in 120% flow rate. The first layer looks the best on this, uh, but the top uh, not really. And I can see here on the sides that uh, I noticed during the printing the nozzle pushed the filament. And look at this uh, side was quite uh, ugly. I can feel that it is heavy compared to this one. Uh, let's measure the weight and the dimensions. Quick check of the dimensions, these are printed in 100% uh, flow rate. This dimension should be 16 millimeters, it is 15.93. 80% flow rate. 15.77. Hmm, and 120. Wow, 16.91. <laughs> But I think I can see some elephant foot. Let's try a little bit higher to measure. But even then 16.65. The thickness should be 4 millimeters. Let's try uh, with this 100% uh, flow rate. 4.12. Now this 80% uh, flow rate. 
4.08 and 120 flow rate Hmm, 4.34 and now let's check the mass this is 100% flow rate hmm. 1.999 grams 80% 1.587 and 120 flow rate 2.34 2.345 grams and these are first layers starting with 80% flow rate this one is with 100% flow rate and 120 you can see those gaps are quite close with this one and these are the top layers the last layers this one is with 100% flow rate and this one is quite ugly with 120% flow rate and this is the side view. The first layer is on the left side and you can see the uh, last one couldn't handle that big amount of material. And now let's start with testing. And I will start with layer adhesion. So this test event has printed in vertical position. The smaller cross section area is 4 by 4 mm. And only I have to cut these uh, supports which are used to, for better adhesion during the printing. Broken cross section of the test specimens. On the left side is 80%, on the right side 120. And this is the closer picture. We can see quite big gaps on the first one. And on the right side is quite close. The other results I will show you later at the end of this video. The next is the tensile strength. Uh, again, the smallest cross section is 4 by 4 millimeter. And I'm starting with 100% flow rate. Eighty percent flow rate. Hundred twenty percent flow rate. And this is what left from this uh, tensile test. 80% uh, flow rate. I think I don't have to comment too much. Uh, obviously, it is very weak um, wall adhesion. This is not typical layer adhesion because it, they are printed in this position and there is not enough adhesion between the walls. Even here, we pr printed with 100% flow rate, um, they didn't broke correctly on that smaller cross section area, and this is sign of a little bit weaker uh, wall adhesion. And uh, only these with 120% uh, flow rate broke correctly on smaller cross section area. And last experiment in this video is the breaking these test hooks, uh, where they will be equal uh, exposed to the tensile and the uh, bending stress. And I'm starting with these with 100% flow rate. Eighty percent flow rate. Hundred twenty percent flow rate. Hooks are broken too and they very similar results like with the previous uh, tensile test. 80% flow rate, uh, absolutely very weak uh, wall adhesion. This is 100% flow rate and uh, 
almost good but uh, yes it could be better I can see here uh, this uh, wallet region between these two ends and uh, well, yes the best looking uh, cross section is with 120% uh, flow rate and these are our results in one page in this line you can see 80% flow rate results 100% and 120% flow rates uh, here are the dimensions I measured, maybe the weight is uh, important to us, uh, but of course in percentage, because theoretically, uh, if this is 100% as a flow rate and in the grams, uh, in that case this should be 80 and this 120, this is quite close, this is a little, little bit less and probably because the, it didn't have enough time to melt the material, so it has a minimal slip and it is a little bit less. And here you can see the weight in this graph, but it is quite close to set values. Okay, now let's see the results of the uh, experiments and uh, layer adhesion. Uh, maybe uh, more information is uh, uh, this in percentage. If this is 100% from this, uh, uh, the 80% flow rate resulted only 44% of this load. So it is not 80% but much lower and uh, this is more than 120% so this was stronger uh, more than it was uh, heavier. And uh, similar results with the tensile <laughs> especially here so you can see uh, only 80% flow rate but the strength was only 22% from this which was uh, printed with 100% flow rate. And uh, this one was uh, only 125% uh, stronger compared to this one. And in the hook test, uh, very weak, uh, the 80% flow rate. And uh, interesting that the 120% uh, flow rate didn't result much stronger test specimen. Now watching the results I uh, decided to do one uh, more quick test because I noticed that uh, test specimens on 120% flow rate uh, they form a lot because the nozzle pushed the material and uh, the material couldn't go anywhere because don't forget that the test specimen is solid inside. Uh, so I decided one, to do one more quick test. I printed these two test specimens. One in 100, the other is 110% flow rate. But the biggest difference is now they are hollow inside. So they are printed with uh, two valves or perimeters and 20% infill. And uh, just a quick test to see the layer adhesion. And actually outside I cannot see any difference in quality. They look the same. So let's see the layer adhesion. Again I'm starting with 100% flow rate test object. And now the object printed with 110% flow rate. And now the conclusions. But first of all, I always like to thanks to my Patreon supporters because they give me really good motivations and I always use their donation to buy different equipment and sensors for my experiments. And now about these objects. <laughs> Here they are. Uh, they are broken equally. Uh, visually, I cannot see any difference in between them. They didn't broke on correct place, but at least they broke equally. So, uh, the conclusions. When I started this video, I thought the conclusions would be something like uh, if you want a stronger object, then raise the flow rate by, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 percent or something like that. But uh, watching the results and the printed objects, uh, the flow rate is very sensitive if it is not uh, set correctly. Both uh, can case problems. If it is lower, then you will have a weaker layer or wall adhesion. If it is higher, in that case, especially if it is a solid object, uh, the material cannot be pushed. Uh, it can be pushed uh, only outside. So uh, instead, uh, I would like to advise you to uh, set the flow rates to 100%. And if you need a stronger objects, then the play with, uh, I don't know, different material, bigger dimensions, maybe the printing orientation and something like that. Actually, in my practice, only one case I uh, had when, when I had to play with the flow rate, and that was when I was experimenting with the lightweight PLA. Uh, that's the material which on the higher temperatures create a foams, 
the volume expand so this means i had to set the lower uh, flow rate to 50 percent and in that case uh, when it comes out from the nozzle it will expand and have the same volume as uh, original filament okay so uh, check your e-steps i have uh, two uh, videos where i change the extruder and uh, with this i have to change the correct uh, steps per millimeter there uh, i will place the link in the description and um, if you need your, your uh, help with the e-steps checking if i miss something uh, then maybe you could drop me a line in the comment thank you for watching and happy printing